Syrian armed army continues to fight terrorism across the country. And four Lebanese soldiers killed in a terrorist attack in the main area. The Iraqi Prime Minister stresses that the involvement of regional states in supporting ISIS as the Iraqi army liberates a number of villages. And in a lighter note, Syria is renowned for its wooden mosaic handcraft that reflects a rich culture and a profound civilization. Good afternoon, this is News in English from the Syrian Arab Division in Damascus. Under the name of Via Arab, a delegation of the Syrian expatriates in Venezuela paid a visit to Damascus with the aim of expressing consolidation, consolidation with the homeland. Members of the delegation laid a wreath of flowers on the monument of the unknown soldier and were briefed on the battles of Hattin, Maysalun and Tishrin, which reflects the steadfastness of the Syrian people and their fight to defend their country. The delegation of Syrian expatriates in Venezuela also met the Assistant Regional Secretary of Al Ba'ath Party, Hilal Hilal, who highlighted the role played by the Syrian expatriates, especially in Latin America, pointing out to their efforts in facing the misleading media campaign, which is currently launched against the country. For his part, head of the delegation asserted that the visit comes within the framework of several activities they organized to support Syria in its fight against terrorism. The Syrian Arab army warded off a terrorist attack in Idlib today and continued to fight the terrorists in several parts of the country. Syrian Arab army units along with the national forces confronted today an attack by terrorists belonging to Al-Nusra Front who had infiltrated into the city of Idlib from different points, making it utterly groundless the allegations by some hostile TV channels claiming that the terrorists had maintained control over the city or over a single neighborhood in it. Meanwhile, Syrian Arab army units destroyed several terrorist hideouts and vehicles, killing many terrorists and injuring others south of Ahsem as well as in Kafar Sijne, Khan Sheikhoun, Tel El Aas and Taftanaz. Moving to Hama, a military source asserted that Syrian Arab army units continued its advance in the northern countryside of the city, maintaining control over the village of Al Buwaida, killing a large number of terrorists and destroying their vehicles in Kafarzita, El Sayed, as well as north of Morik, also in Al Latamne and Thousand Dakile. In Aleppo and its countryside, Syrian Arab army units killed many terrorists, injured others and destroyed their vehicles in a series of operations that targeted their hideouts in Hretan, al Ramuse, the old city of Aleppo, al Kalase, Hayyan, around the castle as well as in al Amiriye and al Azamir. Syrian Arab army carried out other operations in Andan, Aghyur, Roundabout and the west of Handarat, destroying many vehicles including all terrorists inside. In Homs, a Syrian Arab army unit destroyed a trailer loaded with ammunition, killing a terrorist inside as it was passing across the road of Hanurat, Umm al-Dababir in the eastern countryside of Homs, coming from the area of Al-Qairabat in Hama countryside. Syrian Arab army units also eliminated many terrorists and destroyed their vehicles in Ain Hussein, Talbise, al Ward, and east of Tal al shaar in the countryside of the city. The people in Ain Arab continued to ward off attacks by the terrorist organizations of Daesh, ISIS, inflicting increasing casualties among the terrorists. Local sources said that the People's Protection Units fended off an attack by ISIS terrorists on the city of Ain Arab and deported their attempt to control the northern, countryside, the northern neighborhood of the city. The sources pointed out that the battles continued at the southeastern front of the city, especially in Al Hal Market and in the south where seven terrorists were killed. And in another news, 22 unwanted persons from Damascus and its countryside turned themselves in to authorities so that they could have their legal status settled. Meanwhile, the legal files of 80 
Four gunmen from Homs city and its countryside who had turned themselves in to authorities have been settled and they were released after they pledged not to get involved in any wrongdoing that might harm the homeland's security. The settlement benefited gunmen from several neighborhoods in Homs city as well as the areas of Al-Aqsir, Nqayra, Al-Ghanto, Talbisi and al qariatain there, there has been recently a noticeable surge in the number of wanted persons and gunmen who turned themselves into authorities in various provinces, bringing up the, the, the number to thousands to the, of those who turned themselves in could, could have their legal status settled. Much of these falls within the framework of efforts exerted by the government in cooperation with the reconciliation committees and the locals to achieve national reconciliation, a flurry of which has already been made. Iraqi Prime Minister Haider al-Abadi has said that the danger posed by ISIS on Iraq would have repercussions on all the region's countries. In a press conference with his Jordanian counterpart Abdullah Ansur held in Amman, al-Abadi said that combating ISIS is a top priority on his talks with the Jordanian officials. And in a related context, a security Iraqi source said that the security forces killed one of ex the explosive experts makers in ISIS, the terrorist organization, the so-called Abu Yahya, who hold the Iraqi nationality, in a qualitative operation to the east of Baquba. The Iraqi army continues in its widespread operations to expel ISIS from Al-Hwaz, Al-Iskan, and at tamaim neighborhood in a Ramadi area. Meanwhile, other sources said that the tribe sons controlled Al-Karami neighborhood in the middle of Al-Mosul. Fierce confrontations have erupted early this morning between the Lebanese army and the terrorists in the vicinity of Mas'ud Mosque in a Tabana area in Tripoli city to the north. A Lebanese military source has said that a military campaign would continue till the terrorists have been eliminated completely, dismissing the news that a ceasefire agreement has been reached. Further information has been disclosed on the involvement of some states in funding and supplying the terrorists fighting in Syria and Iraq with arms and ammunition. A closer look in the following report. Reports have indicated that the Malaysian police have arrested about 40 people who have been planning to join the terrorist organizations in Syria. The head of German's domestic intelligence agency, Hans George Messen, has warned that the number of the Islamic extremists in Germany is on rise, adding that his agency estimated the number by 6,300. In a radio interview, Messen has said that the number of the Salafists in his country has amounted to 7,000 this year. All this indicate that the so-called international coalition is fragile and inactive in combating these terrorist organizations, let alone the fact that it has violated the international law by launching airstrikes without coordinating with the concerned countries. The big question to be raised here is how have these terrorists managed to infiltrate to Syria and Iraq? and who is really supporting them. Syria is famous for its wooden mosaic handicrafts that started more than 150 years ago in the country, reflecting the ancient and profound civilization in this part of the world. <laughs> were renowned for their decoration arts and their wooden artifacts since the establishment of the first cities in the world. The professionals excelled in making wooden pieces mixed with other materials such as the animal bones and different kinds of shells or metal and even the precious stones. The artists used geometrical shapes such as triangles, circles, pentagons, ovals and so on. And sometimes they decorate them with natural materials. 
Concerning mosaic, we have the wooden mosaic, which is formed of several kinds of wood, such as the rose, the lemon, the walnut, and olive wood. The diversity in colors makes the diversity of mosaic pieces. The rosewood is red, the lemon is yellow, and the walnut is brown. Also we use the calligraphy to draw on wood. Mosaic is a kind of beautiful arts that aim at displaying harmony between the reality and the imagination. This kind of arts needs patience and perseverance to form pieces that reflect certain concepts and poetical contents. It's a traditional handcraft that started more than 150 years ago in Syria and was used plentifully by the artists who used the available materials in their rich country to reflect their civilization and principles. <laughs> With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, www.syrianonline.sy. Now, the latest business and market news with Vani, but after a short break.